Hey everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are taking a deep dive into Nodrid to build a fully functional TCP client server communication system. Now, if you are working with networked applications, IoT systems, or industrial automation, TCP communication is a core technology you need to understand. But here's the challenge. What problem are we solving? When working with device-to-device -device communication, messages often disappear, responses are delayed or lost, and debugging becomes a nightmare. You might send a message to a device, but if there's no response, how do you know what happened? Did the message even reach the server? Was it processed? Without proper logging and visualization, you are troubleshooting in the dark. What are we building? To solve this, we are building a Node-RED TCP client that allows us to send dynamic messages to a TCP server, gives us instant feedback from the server, logs every message and response in real time, lets us choose between multiple servers dynamically, provides a clean and user-friendly UI for monitoring, clears logs on demand to maintain readability. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a powerful and customizable TCP communication system that you can adapt for industrial control systems, smart IoT devices, or any networked application. So, let's dive into the flow and break it down, step by step. Step 1. Setting up the TCP client. Our first goal is to create a flexible TCP client that allows us to send messages dynamically. 1. Message Input, UI Text Input Node We start with a UI Text Input Node, labeled Send Message. This is where we enter the message we want to send to the server. Unlike hard-coded values, this input makes our system flexible, we can send anything from simple text to commands like status or time to trigger specific responses from the server. When we type a message and hit enter, the message data flows forward into the system. But where does it go? That's where our server selection dropdown comes in. To server selection, UI dropdown node. Next, we add a dropdown menu, labeled select server. Instead of hard coding a single server, this dropdown lets us choose between two options. Server 2000, port 2000. Server 2001, port 2001. Each server runs on a different port and processes messages differently. The drop-down value, 2000 or 2001, is passed as a message property to ensure that our client connects to the correct server dynamically. 3. Configuring the TCP connection, change node, set TCP config. Now that we have a message and a selected server, we need to ensure it goes to the right place. The change node does exactly that. This node takes the port number from the drop-down and assigns it to the msg.port property. Sets msg.host to localhost. Now, every time we change the server selection, the system automatically redirects messages to the correct TCP server without us having to hard code anything. This makes the system scalable and adaptable. For sending the message, TCP request node. Now, we are ready to send the message over TCP. The TCP request node is the core of the client, it takes the configured host, localhost, and port, 2000 or 2001, and sends the message. This node is set to return a response as a string, meaning we'll receive a readable reply from the server. Once a response comes back, we send it forward for display and logging. Step 2. Displaying server responses. Once we send a message, we need to see the server's reply instantly. Instead of checking the debug tab, we want a real-time display right on the dashboard. 5. UI text node, displaying server responses. To accomplish this, we use a UI text node labeled, server response. This node takes the payload from the TCP request node and displays it on the dashboard. Now, every time we send a message, we can see the reply immediately. No need to check logs manually, everything updates in real time. Step 3. Implementing a message log. A major issue in TCP communication is message loss. If we don't track what was sent and received, troubleshooting becomes impossible. To fix this, we implement a log system. 
6. Logging sent messages, function node, log sent message. Before the message even reaches the server, we store it in memory. The function node retrieves the existing log from memory. Appends a new log entry. Sent, hello, timestamp. Saves the updated log back to memory. This way, we always have a history of sent messages, even if the server crashes. 7. Logging received messages, function node, log received message. Once the server replies, we store the response using another function node. 8. Appends. Received, hello from server 2000. Timestamp. Now, our message history is complete, we can see every sent and received message. 8. Displaying logs, UI template node, response log. We use a UI template node to create a scrollable log window. This allows us to track multiple messages without losing visibility. Step 4. Implementing a clear log button. Sometimes, the log gets too long and cluttered. To fix this, we add a clear log button. 9. UI button, clear log. Clicking this button triggers a function that clears the stored log. Updates the UI with a blank slate. This makes it easier to start fresh during testing. Step 5. Understanding server logic. Now, let's talk about how the servers process requests. 10. Server 2000 logic. Server 2000 listens on port 2000 and follows these rules. If the message is, hello, it replies, hello from server 2000. If the message is, time, it returns the current timestamp. Any other message is echoed back with a prefix. 11. Server 2001 logic. Server 2001 listens on port 2001 and has different behavior. Hello, greetings from server 2001. Status, server 2001 is running smoothly. Other messages are echoed uniquely. Each server receives messages, processes them using a function node, and sends the response via a TCP output node. Conclusion In this tutorial, we built a dynamic, real-time TCP client-server communication system with a flexible TCP client, real-time message logging, multiple server connections, and intuitive dashboard UI. This setup is perfect for IoT projects, industrial automation, and networked applications. If you found this useful, smash that like button, subscribe, and let me know what feature would you add. Until next time, happy coding!